started. Welcome to the February 4th uh, special assessment hearing for Whitefish Avenue. Thank you all for coming. I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Reese. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, City Council. I'm Dave Reese with Woodseth. We're the project engineer on the projects for 2021. We've prepared feasibility studies for five project areas that are all included in this year's projects. And I'll be going through the feasibility report highlights tonight to cover that. And uh, this is a preliminary improvement hearing to receive public comments uh, from folks that have been provided notice on this project. So when I'm done with the presentation, we'll first ask the city council if you have any questions, and then the folks that are here in person will give them an opportunity to speak. And uh, after that, we'll uh, give the folks that are online uh, on the Zoom an opportunity to ask questions as well. So uh, that's kind of the ground rules and we'll get started. Okay, project area five includes <clears throat> the Whitefish Avenue, Hilltop and Woodland Drives in Coolhaven Lane. All of these roadways are on the Manhattan Point Peninsula. <clears throat> so we're looking at project area five being these roads that are highlighted up on Manhattan Point. For everyone's information, the other four roads are highlighted and those include Wildwind Ranch Drive, Harbor Lane, Rushmore Boulevard and Rushmore Trail in Birch Narrows Road. Um, project area five is um, a project will go through the type of improvements, but project area five consists of a blacktop overlay, asphalt pavement overlay. Uh, we're looking at beginning the project um, where the uh, last project left off on the west end over by the entrance to Camp Knudsen and it would proceed easterly along the Whitefish Avenue corridor. <clears throat> Where it joins up with Hilltop Drive and Woodland Drive, we will also overlay those road segments. And further eastward, again, following Whitefish Avenue, and then northerly to the intersection with Manhattan Point Boulevard, and that would be the extent of the Whitefish Avenue overlay. We're also showing on this slide the Coolhaven Lane project area, which starts at the uh, south landing intersection and goes westerly to the end of the road where the city has maintained in the past. So the last time these roadways were surfaced, uh, Coolhaven Lane was first paved in 2001. And <clears throat> Whitefish Avenue uh, was paved by the county in an overlay project back in 2002. That's when the county, uh, actually this route of Manhattan Point Boulevard looping around Whitefish Avenue was considered a county road. It was County Road 140. And the county wanted to uh, turn back those roads to the city. Um, it, it really is not a connector road. It's a locally serviced road. And so uh, they upgraded Whitefish Avenue with the overlay. Uh, being that it was getting toward that point of rehabilitation and then it was turned over to the city for future maintenance. Okay. 
These are some photos uh, of Cool Haven Lane. <clears throat> For the most part, the pavement on this roadway is still in pretty good shape after 20 years. We do have some pavement stress areas. Um, it's 16 feet in width, not very wide, but it is a, a dead end roadway um, and it serves a limited number of properties. It's getting to the point where uh, we need to consider overlaying it uh, otherwise, it will continue to degrade further, and then we're, we'll be looking at reconstruction of this road. And uh, given the cost of the overlay versus waiting another five, 10 years, and then facing the cost of reconstruction, we'd rather uh, overlay this at this time and possibly get 20 years out of it again, okay? These are some photos of the pavement conditions along Whitefish. And uh, again, there's cracking. There always is with pavement. Uh, the city's been crack sealing the roadway. Um, the surface is starting to get oxidized again. The last time it was overlaid, 2002. And <clears throat> The, uh, there's some micro cracks that were, are really visible when you can see it after it's rained. And so it's, it's to the point again where um, we need to consider overlaying it or if we wait again and try to kick the can down the road five, 10 years, we'll be, probably be facing a reconstruction of this roadway along with hilltop and uh, woodland. Those are about the same vintage. Are they the same condition, Dave? They're, they're a little different, but pretty close to pretty each close. other. And so, um, you know, it's, it's uh, a case where overlaying whitefish and then coming back a year later and remobilizing and having that cost, there isn't enough difference in the pavement condition that it's it's uh, uh, more prudent to do all of them all at the same time in this area, okay? Some of these uh, areas that we're um, looking at also include doing some drainage improvements where it's eroding along the edge of the pavement. Uh, Whitefish has some relief on it and there is some erosion happening in a few spots. We've reviewed that with uh, public work staff and uh, so part of the project scope would include some curb and gutter to stem that uh, from happening in the future and providing a, a, a uh, spillway off the edge of the road so that we can prevent the erosion. Uh, the cross-section for the proposed improvements, uh, generally the width is going to remain the same. Uh, what we're overlaying is what's there. Um, then it will, this will increase the, the road elevation a little bit uh, by the thickness of the overlay. And so we'll need to top dress the shoulders with some topsoil and seed it. Um, all the roads vary a little bit in width. Uh, for the most part, we're looking at 24 feet in width on whitefish. Um, woodland is 18 feet in width. <clears throat> As part of the feasibility study, we estimated what the construction costs would be and the engineering, administrative, and legal costs associated with a Chapter 429 assessment project. Um, all of the scope of work, uh, typical line items that we'd see in a project are included in these estimates. And uh, the biggest cost, as usual, is the actual cost of the pavement uh, installed. Uh, we're using a unit price of $85 per ton on that. Uh, we're hoping that with competitive bids, we can get a better price than that. Um, 
probably in the last year or so, we've been using estimates in the 70, mid 70 uh, dollars per ton range. So we're hopeful that we've accounted for any uh, increases in oil costs that might occur this year. Um, for the Whitefish Avenue segment, we're looking at a total estimated construction cost with a 10% contingency, just under $350,000. Um, the engineering, administrative, and legal costs just under $70,000. Uh, it went for a total estimate for whitefish segment of about 419,000. <clears> I also did not mention, I need to mention, that mailboxes on the projects will also be um, changed over from the mailbox supports that are there to the city's standard swing away mailboxes, and those will be provided as part of this project. Okay. Striping. Striping is included on the Whitefish Avenue project. It is currently striped, and so we've got that included in the project as well. We've broken out costs for Hilltop and Woodland and Cool Haven Lane, so we can go through those. Uh, the construction cost for Hilltop with the contingency just over 20,000. And with the engineering and so forth, we're just under 25,000 for that short segment. Woodland Drive, a little bit narrower road, um, estimated construction 18.4, just under 4,000 for the engineering admin legal, so a little over 22,000. For Woodland. Cool Haven Lane. Um, construction with contingency 34.3, engineering legal admin just under seven. Total project estimate 41.2. I've summarized all of these roadways here on this slide. So all of the construction with contingency about 422.3, engineering admin legal about 84.6. So this total project area estimate for area five is 506,900. The method of assessment that the city's considered for all of the roads in the 2021 street improvement projects um, are based on the benefit to the properties. Uh, to do, to um, determine what that is, the city commissioned a licensed appraiser to take a look at the roadways and look at the properties that are there. We have uh, a lot of different types of properties from a use standpoint and, and uh, position standpoint. There's some on the lake, some off lake, some are vacant, some have homes or structures on them. They all vary a little bit in range of benefit that was assigned by the appraiser. 1,500 to 3,000 for a residential lake home, um, 1,000 to 2,500 for an off lake home and uh, for vacant land, 1,500 to 3,000 per lot, and 1,000 to 2,500 for non-lake frontage. So the city took into consideration all of this, um, and also the fact that Manhattan Point is fairly unique from the way it was platted back in the early 1920s. Uh, a lot of the lots are uh, on the order of 50 to 60 feet in width. Uh, the lot areas do not meet current planning and zoning requirements for legal lot. Uh, there's numerous cases where folks own uh, adjoining lots uh, to provide sufficient area for 
a building site, septic, a well, and so forth. So that's one unique thing about this. I'm going to go through some additional slides here. Um, speaking about what the assessment for this overlay would be. Uh, taking into account all the ranges, we, we are looking at $1,000 per lot for the assessment. Um, now, what the, the big question there is what consists of a lot? And um, the interpretation of this is based on uh, probably best explained by going through some of these slides. Where we have properties that are jointly owned and adjoining um, that by today's standards would be considered not a, a legal lot, um, we are looking at the two lots together or multiple lots that are adjoining and joint ownership as being one lot, okay? So for instance, in this slide, uh, you can see the two lots uh, abutting Manhattan Point Boulevard and fronting on Whitefish Avenue, jointly owned, that would be considered one and would receive one $1,000 assessment. Similarly to the south of that, uh, there's a home with an entrance on Whitefish, jointly owned, considered one lot, would receive one assessment. <clears throat> Moving further down the road, we can see that there's many cases like this where we have joint ownership abutting lots. Uh, some have two, some have three. They're both on lake and off lake. In each of these cases, that would be considered one, one $1,000 assessment. So some folks own a lake home on the lake side and own off lake lots on the other side of the road. In that case, that would be two. You would get one for the lake side and one for the off lake side. Okay. This is Cool Haven Lane. That one's a little bit more straightforward, but the lots are uh, of different shapes and sizes. Um, they're described across the roadway in some cases. Uh, each of these lots, as described mostly by meets and bounds descriptions, would be one. Even the large parcel on the north side would be one, okay? <clears throat> so we've gone through the costs and the methodology of assessment and the way this project's being approached. Um, where we're at in this procedural schedule is on February 4th, we're holding the preliminary improvement hearing tonight the next step would be for the city council to consider a resolution on improvement and preparing the plans for bidding. Um, I've got February 4th on the slide here, but we're going to have that before the council on Monday, February 8th at your regular council meeting. All right. Um, pending that moving forward, plans would be prepared we would look at opening bids in March, and all of the projects would be let in one contract for the benefit of gaining the best price on all of the project areas. Uh, at that point, if we have a uh, acceptable bid, then a contract will be let, and we would expect the construction to begin in May or possibly after Memorial Weekend. We've seen that occur several times. Contractors like to avoid the traffic and holiday traffic as much as anyone else. Um, overlays can go rather quickly, um, but with all of the other projects, the paving we would expect would be done along with the paving on the other projects. That's typically the way the contractors would schedule that. So 
we may not see any activity on Manhattan Point until the other roads are brought up to the point of being ready to pave. And then it, the roads that we have here would, could conceivably be paved within a matter of uh, a week to 10 days or so. Uh, after the construction, we would schedule a final assessment hearing. That's typically done after the construction. It is the council's choice to hold that earlier if you wish. Sometimes that's done after bids are opened. Uh, but normally we do that in the fall. Everyone would receive notice of the hearing again and be able to speak to the council on the uh, assessment. Then the council would adopt the assessment role and a, there would be a 30 day period where people could uh, pay their assessment in full as allowed by state statute and they would not incur any interest. After the 30 day periods elapsed and the role is certified to the county auditor, then uh, interest would begin accruing at the rate set by the council, which is usually one to two percent over the borrowing rate of the city. The city is taking a bond on this project. And over a period of time set by the council, which has been 10 years in past road projects. So uh, folks would see that on their tax rolls in 2022 for their thousand dollar assessment and that would be um, annualized over a 10 year period if that's the period you set. All right. I think that concludes uh, what I have to present tonight. Are, are there any questions of the city council? Dave, is this, Dave, is this would this be treated the same where in a uh, year, 2000, uh, 2022, we would come back and chip seal it? That's correct. Uh, the city has adopted uh, a more robust maintenance program that includes chip sealing or seal coating, as it's known. And within a year or two, folks could expect that the roadways that are overlaid would be seal coated. And that would hopefully extend the life of the pavement even longer, maybe another four to six years. Okay. But that's part of our city maintenance, that's not an additional uh, assessment. That's correct, yep. Okay. If there aren't any other city council questions, then we'll open it up to folks that are here. Please, if you have something to say, please come up to the podium and state your name and your address. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> my name is Marion Trees. Uh, my wife and I, uh, my wife Rhonda, and I live at 12482 Whitefish Avenue. Um, my question, I guess it would probably be to you, would be um, our driveway and many of our neighbors um, appears to be lower than the road. And so every time it rains, there's always water that stands here. This additional raise of the road would, would add to that problem. Is there any, uh, any, anything in your bid that would address that issue? I, I can repeat the question. Um, the question is, will, is there anything in the contract that would address existing drainage issues on existing driveways uh, with the road being elevated about an inch and a half with this overlay? Um, my answer to that question is uh, that there are some things we can do with the paving we're fairly limited with an overlay because we're not really changing the uh, shape of the road a whole lot. Um, we're elevating it by an inch and a half. Sometimes we can put uh, curbing or gutter alongside the edge of the pavement while we're doing uh, an overlay. 
Um, but if, if the uh, driveway is, is significantly lower than the elevation of the pavement, uh, really all we can do is add to the driveway material itself and uh, that would be limited to what's in the actual right-of-way. Uh, so we can't go beyond the right-of-way uh, with road improvements. Um, I expect that every driveway will gain some additional material with this project uh, just to, to basically ramp it in to the new road surface because it'll be a little bit higher. Um, but otherwise, this is, this is an overlay project and we really haven't um, included in the scope to do a significant amount of ditching or storm sewer and that sort of thing. But it would be a good opportunity for people to do that on themselves while the guys are there, the crews are there. Potentially, yeah. That so. With the crews there, sometimes you can get a good price to improve your own driveway situation. But in the contract, typical, it is typical that we'll add some gravel to a driveway to bring it back in if it's already a gravel driveway. If it's paved, then we'll go back on the pavement and saw cut it and, or, or mill a notch there and then they'll bring the pavement down and match it in, so. Thank you, that answers my question. Okay. Come on, Joel. Good evening, my name is Joel Rutger. I live at 11441 Whitefish Avenue. Couple questions. It seems to me the pavement's in pretty good shape. I've lived on this street since year round, since 2012. I think more people walk on Whitefish Avenue than drive on it. Um, I can see the edges don't seem to be breaking up. Um, I get the fact there's some potholes, but to me, it seems prudent they could be patched or filled. Um, I see us spending a whole bunch of money here, and I see an assessment going out to all of us that it's going to be a little painful. I mean, it's going to get spread over time or however, but money's money. Um, I, I, I truly question whether this is necessary. As far as drainage goes, there was a drainage project that was completed last summer on our part of Whitefish Avenue. Uh, I'm not sure. If there's any cases that are worse than that, that was definitely an issue, but it's been fixed. I think that was taken care of at the same time as the drainage project down by Manhattan Beach. Um, I kind of question, this will stir the pot, this meeting's in early February. No one's around. Meetings like this, to me, ought to take place when more seasonal people are here to speak their mind. It's their property that's being taxed as well. I'm fortunate to be here in February, so if something like this comes up, I can have a chance to say what I think. But I, I do question why this is being presented to the public at a time of the year when there's just not very many people around. Um, and last but not least, I kind of like my mailbox. <laughs> it's more money being spent. I, I, I don't see mailboxes falling down. I don't see plow trucks wiping out mailboxes. I mean, maybe I'm being too prudent here, but it just it seems like a, a $500,000 project is, is taking place and I question whether we really need to be throwing this kind of money at Whitefish Avenue. At least, to my knowledge, it just doesn't seem in that bad a shape to be throwing this kind of money at it. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Hopefully all the people that live on the road have been notified, and they are able to get on Zoom if they want to, so it's better than it used to be years ago. Anyway. Could you put up um, the uh, slide of the... Um the main road going out toward uh, Camp Knutson, so we can see. Um, I, I think that's what Dave is working on now. This way, farther, farther east. Okay, right there. Okay, I'm Dave Weigrin. Mr. Rutger just took the words out of my mouth. Dang it. <laughs> and um, I have lived here along with my neighbor since we were four years of age. We've driven on that road for years. I mean, I'm 77, so that's, give it 73. My neighbor's a year or two older than I am, and he can say the same thing. 
I don't see spending this kind of money. That road is, for most of us, in good shape. I mean, it used to be a disaster. I mean, it was a true disaster before it was refinished. And it was, I can remember in the wintertime, it was like, my God, you know, it was terrible. But once they, once they resurfaced it, it's been, been very good. If you want to spend some money, Right here, yeah. at that corner. Nobody can hear it. No, no, no. Come on. Huh? No, no, no. Dave, can you help direct on that thing where he's talking about? Oh, okay. Yeah, you got to talk into the mic so okay. that the people on the Well, anyway, that corner, corner, now Steve disagrees with me, but. Is it this corner you're saying? Yes. You know, um, I lived, uh, well, we're right on that corner, and it's, it's been a miracle that no one's been killed there. No serious injuries. A couple times I've almost had collisions. You can't see. People come around there, and they come around sometimes very fast. I would love to see something done where people could see what's coming around the corner both ways. Um, it's just a miracle that no one has been really injured on that corner. And I, I would be happy to pay for that. But uh, Is I that where you still live? You still live on the corner there? I'm down. No, my sister's right on the corner now next to Steve. And I'm down, I'm halfway down. And I own lots on both sides of the road. Um, I'm going to have a hell of a time writing you a check for 2000 bucks. I think it's 2000 and not 5000 I own five lots, three on one side and two on the other. But they're, the way it was described, I think it was, I would probably be two. uh, 2000 right, is what it would be. And I'm going to have a, a really, really, really hard time um, writing you a check for that, to be very honest. I don't think it's necessary. Um, my mailbox, I agree. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I try to, in the wintertime, I try to, you know, make sure the mailman can get in there. Um, I just, I just can't, I can't approve of this at all. And I don't know where it came from. All of a sudden you get this letter of half a million dollars on, on and uh, just, I think it's absolutely ridiculous. And um, I'm going to have a hard time writing a check out, I'll tell you that. Dave, thank you much, truly, for coming up. Come on up. Um, My name is Cindy Levy, and I live on 12533 Whitefish Avenue, right across from uh, my neighbors that spoke first. Um, And I agree that I think it's an expensive project on a road that I walk on every single day, as well as drive on. Um, But my question to you is, three years ago they did Manhattan Point Boulevard and nobody was assessed any money. Yeah. Yeah. So are we setting a new precedent now? Anchor Point and Manhattan Point missed out on the assessment policy. Yeah, very unfortunate. So, yeah, that is unfortunate yeah. because we're kind of... It is. We're, we're paying for, for that. For everybody. Yeah. And also, um, I have two lots, I guess we could say. So there is a lot that's behind me that is owned by my significant other, and he is not officially on Whitefish, but he also got a letter. So is he going to be assessed? He's not on Whitefish Avenue? Not legally. He has well, access that, that'd to... Be a, that'd be an engineering question. Right, yeah, so then, I don't, I'm not sure exactly where you're speaking of. If you bring up the map, um, you had a picture of our lots where you to, had... To the east of this? Right as you turn onto Whitefish off of Manhattan Point Boulevard. So we're, we're pretty close down to the... Right there? Correct, yeah. right there. Okay, so I own the lot next to that red dot. This this one? Right? Right there. Down, down, right there. That's okay. my lot. My significant other has the lot behind me. Back over here? Right there. So he is not on Whitefish Avenue. He does have access from a non-maintenance road to Whitefish Avenue. Is he going to be assessed as well? Is there a building on it? I don't know. If he's built matters. he's in the process of building yeah. something, but he'll get assessed for that. We're already being we're already paying for our home 
our home assessment. We're talking about the roads right now. Yeah. Well, Dave, that's to get a yeah, answer Yeah, I think that. if you receive notice, uh, we did notice a lot of the people that, that use Whitefish to access their properties. And these are the ones that back in here that, you know, they maintain a drive to get there. They were noticed. Um, okay, well, we, we may need I to also, look at those. I also own this lot, and so I don't, mm -hmm. I don't. This one here. I own it because I don't want anybody else to build a stinking shed on it. <laughs> but that's just my opinion. Yeah. So you so, definitely have two assessments. I definitely do, and I accept that. But I, I think it's unfortunate that that really, when I thought, because I asked my friends who live on trout, how come you guys didn't get it? So why why is this happening now? Or is it just like we're lucky? It's just a policy the city came up with to try to help pay for these projects. So, so our taxes aren't up. high enough? Well, they could be higher if we put this all on the tax roll. You know, so well, and the majority of the houses on these on Whitefish Avenue are probably paying seasonal taxes, yeah, which are higher. It is unfortunate that Anchor Point and Manhattan Point the policy didn't start with the second round of all the roads. I've always thought that and felt that, but you know, if that's looking in the rearview mirror, I don't know what we can do about that. Okay, so, so here we go, huh? <laughs> well, you're not alone. <laughs> no. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Is Much. there any way that um, this director alluded to it that you know? Can you come? Here's, come on. I'm sorry. Yep. Is there any way that there could be a a, a, a questionnaire and a survey as to the landowners and whether people really want this. I mean, if everyone up and down our point says, "Oh, yeah, they want it," well, then I'll say, "Fine, I'll go along with it." But I just don't, I just, I mean, why can't, why can't there be a, some sort of a, a notice and a, and a uh, you know, question, questionnaire go out, you know, would you be, would you approve of this project and you're going to be assessed? Instead of sending a letter, we're doing this project, we're going to send a half a million bucks and here's your assessment of 2,000 for me and other people 1,000. I think that would be a lot fairer and I think it would, you wouldn't get people like me yelling about it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to engage you with you a little bit on my personal feelings about it. Is the city is kind of trying to split these road projects up so we don't have 20 of them in one year. But, but that doesn't fit, take away the fact that maybe the road doesn't need to be done. And maybe the policy should be that we should do 10 of them in one year when they need to be done and not prior to that. If you've got a 20-year road and it costs you 100 grand, if you can get 30 years out of it, it's going to cost you a lot less per year for that road, right? I mean, that's just simple math. Yeah. So I greatly appreciate hearing this from you. And, you know, we'll decide, and it'll go out to bids, and these jobs have not been let out yet, so it's not done. So it's a good thing you're here, voicing your opinion. I well, I would like, I, I, I was going to call a lot of my neighbors, you know, but I didn't, you know, most you of know, them live in the cities. And I be, got to believe if you went up and down the road and you had people sign a petition and you gave it up to this board right here and it was a large majority, no, I, I think we would listen to you. Okay. Well, so, um, I might, I might I try certainly to, would, yeah, but I okay. think they would too. I think well, that, we that's would. fair. Yeah. That's fair. And that's. I guess that's what a democracy is. So, know, yeah. so why it wasn't put out last July that next year's road projects, that should probably be a good policy. I, I totally agree. I mean, that's that. why I'm saying, why not do that this summer? And then if it, everyone wants it done, next, do it next year. One year is not going to make a lot of difference. Yeah, I, I agree with you, totally. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Please, yep. <clears throat> So with, with the assessment projects, I think everyone's getting a good feel of, of the steps and procedures that it takes to do this. Also, it goes hand in hand with the annual budgeting that the city council goes through with staff and all the department heads. Uh, the capital improvement plan is updated annually. We look at the roads that will hopefully fit the budget and the bonding scenario and financing. 
Um, the city made a conscious decision to look at special assessments, uh, which are not new in Cross Lake. Uh, lot, most of the roads that have been improved have been assessed. The policy was not to assess uh, roads that were already paved. Uh, that de decision and policy was changed uh, within the last uh, 12 to 18 months or so. And so uh, the city is looking at what it has available for road budget purposes and, and keeping up with road maintenance, including overlays, seal coats, and so forth. Um, a, the decision was made to include overlays as accessible uh, projects. Uh, seal coats, no, that decision was made. Um, I'd like to see that gentleman if we were reconstructing this road. <laughs> well, that that was my second point. Is <laughs> the other be four thousand bucks a lot? The other four <laughs> project areas are being reclaimed, and and that's because, you know, we waited too long, and they're they're to the point where overlaying them is no longer really a good option. It's it's for the future, for the next twenty years. And so if we, uh, you know, we can say that these roads are in good shape and they, they probably would last uh, longer, but if we wait too long, then the cost of addressing them later can be fourfold what it is today. And the assessments on the other four project areas are $4,000 per lot, and that's to reconstruct those roads because they're, they've been beyond the point of, of an overlay. Yep. Dave, uh, question for you. It's my understanding that if people, if, uh, especially people on fixed incomes, uh, there may be a program out there that can help them a little bit? Uh, the statute 429 has a deferment clause in it, and there are specific criteria that folks have to meet. So. But there, there might be something that could help. So. Possibly, yes. Uh, Dave, could you respond to Mr. Rutgers' concern about why this assessment hearing is being held now? Well, uh, again, going back to when the city looks at the, the first chance that the city gets annually to take a look at the roads and the pavement conditions is after the snow and ice melts in the spring. We start taking a look at all the pavement conditions, uh, which changes a little bit every year. Some roads get worse, some stay the same. Uh, the priorities sometimes change, where we have to look at addressing this road now uh, rather than later. And so uh, a capital improvement plan is adjusted accordingly with priority of roads that we need to, need to address. And uh, part of that program is trying to keep roads that are in halfway decent shape um, going for another 20 plus years by looking at overlays. And then we're looking at the ones that are more expensive, they're, got, they're too far gone, and we have to look at uh, reclaiming them and reconstructing them. I remember last year we did not do a road because the bids came in too high. Isn't there? something about trying to do the timing of the bids for um, to keep to, to get as good a bid as we can if we get too late in the year that's i think right. we've had trouble before that's right and timing is uh, important when looking at bidding these projects we'd like to bid them earlier in the year is better when uh, the paving contractors locally which they're really all, only two or three and three if we get a large enough project to draw in another bid. Um, so uh, yeah, it, last year we had a set of projects that, that kind of got whittled down to one project and all the unit pricing that came in in that late in the year bid uh, uh, resulted in rejecting the bid and including it in this year's projects. So we're hoping we can get competitive bids this time around and uh, get a lot of work done for the dollar. I want to speak to his comment about this time of year when nobody's around. I mean, this city has historically been, I'm going to say, condemned 
for doing this in February when nobody's around. I, I agree with you on that. Why we can't look a year ahead and put the posting out in July, it, it'd probably be a little smoother with the public because people come back in April and May and they say, what the hell happened? Go ahead, Ted, come on up. <coughs> Mr. Mayor, in the past, we have held some of these hearings in the summertime, and nobody shows up. It's too nice on the lake. Well, you could take that comment out. Yeah, of I, I'm just that. that's. I'm just expressing that we have done it in the summertime in the past, and in the 20 years I've been here, we have done it, and we just didn't have anybody show up. We sat here by ourselves. Right. Okay. But anyway, it's valid. Did they, get, did they also get assessed? Is that there was an assessment for those meetings? Yeah, you got it. Should come back up if you're going to talk. Dave, Dave, can I say something? Yeah, Reed, did you want to come up? Yeah. Reed Price, uh, 12081 Whitefish Avenue. Thanks for uh, holding this meeting. Um, I'm uh, newer, newer to the neighborhood, uh, just been here a few years, but I, I have to agree with uh, staying ahead of the maintenance. If it's. Uh, Thousand bucks now. It's not free, but it's better than four thousand. If we wait another five years, and you can see it, it is deteriorating. And I'm more partial because I'm in that type of business and can see stuff wear out. So it feels like it uh, is cheap precaution. Is now. Precaution to stay ahead of it. So again, I'm not trying to stir up the pot with the neighborhood, but it feels like it's better to stay ahead of it. Thanks. Yep. Thanks, Reed. So that is true. You spend a thousand bucks now, you get 15, 20 years service out of it. The other four projects we're doing, it's 4,000 bucks each, and they're going to get 25 years out of it. So your thousand bucks goes a lot longer right now than if you have to redo the whole road. Good evening, Mr. Rowe. Good morning. Usually we meet in the morning, don't we? Anyway. Good evening, City Council. My name is Steve Rowe. I live at 11663 Whitefish Avenue. My family's been here for 85 years. I really appreciate the paved road that we have. I drove on the gravel for most of that time. However, I have a few issues with the project. If you're going to replace all our mailboxes, then I hope you maintain them. I've had my mailbox in the last 20 years knocked down five times. I finally built one with a shear pin in it, so when they knock it down, I put it up and replace the shear. So if you guys want to replace it with those ugly exhaust pipe mailboxes, then I hope you come in and replace them when they're knocked down. Curb and gutter. I hate curb and gutter. You concentrate the storm water, and then what do you do with it? You pipe it into the lake. Please don't do that. That is an atrocity. Also, the slope on the road, the side slope, they used to call it super elevation. When the county paved the road, and I was here, and it was, I think it was in uh, 2004, but you can correct me if I'm wrong, they flattened the road out, flooded five lots all around me. They flooded five lots. There was a foot of water standing on some of them. It is a critical drainage area. And so you've got to keep the water to the north, and it's part of that project where you paved a, a drainway into the ditch just west of me. Be careful, because that whole area drains to the lake. Uh, Somebody here mentioned the fact that uh, what are you going to do with driveways that are lower than the, the road? Well, if you keep the road super elevated the wrong way or away from the lake, you don't have that problem. Of course, some of us have to go out and buy a couple of buckets of asphalt and put a ridge in their driveway to keep the water from running down it. I've had that happen. I was here when the county put about six to eight inches of class five base under that road. The road is in good shape for its age. But I, uh, I really question, and I'll ask you, how much did you charge the people along Manhattan Point Boulevard for the 
seal coat that they put down here a couple years ago. The seal coat is maintenance, Stephen. We don't charge anybody Let's do for maintenance. that. You've answered yeah. my question yeah. beautifully. Yeah. Let's do maintenance on whitefish. Let's put one of those good seal coats down. That was the neatest seal coat job I have ever seen. It's coarse chips, lots of oil, and it works well. And those maintenance projects that we call maintenance, we assess, it, I believe, half. Half the owners get, half the city gets. At least that was one of the, one of the ways it was done. I, and that's not our policy today. Maintenance. Good. Well, let's yeah. let's take up your current policy okay. and, and seal coat Whitefish Avenue. That'd be a much smarter move. I'm ready. To um, water drain. And then we don't risk the issue of draining water onto the properties. We had a real mess there when the county had, it was, I think it was called County Road 104, Manhattan Point Boulevard all the way around and uh, Whitefish Avenue. And the city stood up firm and would not accept the, that road unless it was paved. And I was there when they did it. My wife uh, offered to buy me a t-shirt that said, beware of owner. She uh, always laughs at that. Appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the and then next time I'll have it done. And the mayor. <laughs> anyway, um, drainage, the construction project. Dave Weigrin mentions a good issue. That corner that he's talking about. You just creep around it, and people that don't understand that have collisions there, or they run off the road. And so that's, uh, that might be a good thing to look at, but keep the water from as it's draining today, unless other ones need improvement. But I had to go out on the road and actually direct traffic and construction to keep the water from running onto our properties. Okay, with an o proposed overlay like they're talking. It's what was that? It's an inch and a half. An overlay that you're, they're proposing, it's an I inch and I went out and, and stopped half. the culvert. There's no culvert in there. No, an overlay to the road project. It's All not right, a reconstruct. So they're going to overlay the existing road okay. with an inch and a half. Fine. So, uh, or they'd overlay it with, you know, seal coating is what? Quarter half inch. an inch to half an inch? inch yeah. yeah. Over, overlay. You know, an inch, an inch and a half overlay isn't much more than a, a seal coat. <coughs> I don't know that that's that good a protection. You might as well put another three or four inches on it to make it the work. The point of that comment is I don't think it's going to affect the runoff or the rainwater at that point. Yeah, well, let's talk about the reflecting cracks that come through. And I'm, I'm just saying, I think yeah. what you did with uh, Manhattan Point Boulevard is incredible. I have never seen a seal coat. But now that was over a currently overlaid road. That was not over an old road. That was over a new road. Manhattan Point was a new road. Manhattan Point Boulevard has been paved in pieces. It was paved up about a, a half a mile one year, and then they extended it. They extended it all the way up. But I mean, wasn't that all to new? And then they crack sealed over the top of it. And they paved it from Hilltop down to Camp Knutson just a few years ago. We we got a new road about three years ago um, from 66 all the way down to Whitefish, but now that, let Dave Reese talk. Oh, they came all the way down to the lodge, didn't they? The Yes. Manhattan Point Boulevard was um, constructed in 2010. In 2018, there were trail improvements that were done in 2010 and 18. Okay, um, the, the uh, road uh, was totally seal coated uh, after the 2018 project. So well, the it wasn't th overlaid though. It wasn't overlaid, it, oh, was, recon was, it was. was reconstructed. So that was oh, a full okay. depth reclaim yeah. Yeah. on the whole project. In 2018. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was. And then the crack ceiling was put on the year after just yeah. to extend the life out. All right, anybody else? John, you have something? After this crowd, there's no point in being bashful. <laughs> uh, John Forney, 11797 <clears throat> Whitefish Avenue. 
Um, I, I guess where I'm going is that I've been told that this is the first assessment for road. That's what I was told. And I question that because in, if it was good enough all these years to use the entire community to pay for our roads and spread the cost across the whole thing. I guess, first of all, I say, what special benefit am I getting that they aren't getting? That I should pay a special assessment and they don't. They can drive their car and I can drive my car and there is no difference. So, I, I, I mean, I can understand it when there's discussion about the extension of the sanitary sewer and you want to hit somebody with an assessment there because they're getting a special service. I can't walk into their house and use their bathroom and leave. But people can drive up and down my road and there's no problem. I don't get anything more than they get. So. I, I, I simply don't understand that uh, concept. And I, I appreciate or I heard you say, well, we, we went through that policy. Um, I think it's poor policy because roads are one of the basic things that cities do. And when you start then nailing people like this, I think it's wrong. I can't even comment to that, John. I can't. <laughs> yeah. I, I could speak to the special benefit if you'd like. I don't know that they're going to appreciate that too much. <laughs> yeah. no, it's not going to change our minds. I would, I would <laughs> think so. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah. No, but it's, it's a common assessment for road improvements in municipalities, especially outstate communities where you don't get any state aid, um, you don't have any local road improvement uh, program or funds to fund your road maintenance, overlays, uh, all the costs. City of Cross Lake has 60 plus miles of road and but you know. What, you know, let's, what time is it? We got time. Years ago, we used to get assessed for new roads because 30 years ago, I lived on Wilderness Trail and I owned thousands of feet on that road. And it came through and it assessed it and I paid a tremendous amount of money for that. Most of it was unimproved, vacant land, but they still, it, they kind of like the policy is today, same kind of thing. But then it did seem to go away for quite a period of time. Well, the city assessed projects, and I remember that, Dave, because that was a project that I was one of the project engineers on. And it was assessed. Uh, the, the city was uh, undergoing a program to upgrade all the gravel roads right. to paved status um, for looking at, um, you know, improvement and benefit to the properties, better improved access, less maintenance of gravel maintenance, keeping a a road yeah. grader going and yeah. so oh. forth. And so um, the assessment policy at that time uh, was developed and it was about a 50-50 uh, difference. You took the total project cost, 50% of it was assessed, 50% was assumed yeah, by was pretty aggressive. the general tax revenues of the city. But where my question is then, is so that was 25 years ago or whatever that time frame was. Yeah. How did Manhattan Point and anchor point get skipped. Where, where did we drop it and then we picked it up again? Well, I, I uh, don't know that. Anchor point was completed in 2016, uh, Manhattan Point project in 2018, uh, the last bit of it. And the policy all through that time was that um, the second paving or overlaying of roadways, uh, reconstruction of an existing paved road that had already been assessed um, would not be assessed, okay? But in that time period, like I said, 12 to 18 months ago, we were looking at the program of funding 
uh, ongoing maintenance and upgrade of roads, keeping up rather than kicking the can down the road, so to speak, and not doing overlays. Uh, we so wanted the new to get roads have always been assessed, but then the reconstructs weren't. We did a couple of them. We realized it's a pretty tough it, cookie to swallow for it, the city. It, without uh, outsourcing some funding uh, and looking at completely internally, uh, you raise your road levy and you do a project that way every year, uh, or you look at using special assessments to help offset the costs for the people that are benefiting along that specific roadway that's being improved. And it is a special benefit. Um, it's recognized by the licensed appraiser that it's going to increase your market value by at least that amount I'll of bet the assessment. I'll you 90% of these people don't appreciate that appraiser. At least a thousand. I would just speculate that, you know. Okay, well. I mean, they got cabins up here and that's where they live. And the appraiser would, would say it's actually probably higher than the number we picked this year for overlays based on but that report. Their would be, yeah. 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 The, is, the benefit. Does, does anybody know if we were getting the state aid back in uh, when we didn't do Manhattan or anything? We were not. Okay, I just got my answer. Yeah, we're not a state aid city. Well, but did we used to be? No, that was my question. Okay. So we're going to go through this policy then at the meeting Monday or something. The council will probably talk about this further. But you know, one of the thoughts to me is anyway, is maybe we should get more years out of these roads, let them go to hell, and then the people will come back and want to get them paved, because they're, I agree. There's a happy medium there. Yeah. Yeah, there, there needs to be. But most of these roads, yeah. I mean, I drive them all. They're not bad. I, you know, look at them, and I don't know how many years. We got one Birch Nose, that's 35 years old, and that's not a bad road. Can I ask why we make the residents change their mailboxes? What's the purpose of that one? So Ted doesn't have to go out and repair all the mailboxes when he wings well, them off. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's a policy that was adopted by the city to change out the mailboxes during these road projects, uh, consistent with what the county has done, um, because snow plowing, uh, winging the, the snow, especially when it's heavy, ends up laying down a lot of mailboxes that the city has to go back and repair or put back up again, or the resident does if it's completely gone so oh so these are mailboxes that swing if the plow hits them is that it or what? they're they're intended to swing with the snow when it hits it but i don't know that we should take the residents choice away from them if they want to have a group mailbox or a different mailbox you know we're kind of big uncle sam was kind of stepping on their toes again and saying no you can't and i don't know that we should do that now if this plow hits it then it should be and it is i think today it's their liability right ted if, if you got an old wooden mailbox and you knock it over it's kind of tough right yeah yeah so the city could offer them and you do offer them i think it's yes, 75 we we, bucks we, a piece or something yes we have the posts available if people want to so choose to put that type of post in what was happening is a lot of times we were getting phone calls and that we knocked on this mailbox or that mailbox and we'd go to fix it and it was an old rotten four by four that yeah no I've been basically the snow load just pushed it over and we didn't hit it but it was the snow load going by it so at that time the city decided just to standardize put all the steel in and if we hit it or if the snow knocked it over we'd make a repair of it which we're doing today I mean if we've you know it's our fault we we'll take care of it um, there's a lot of them that are still out there that are right and if people but, but and, from a property owner do could they take it a little offensively that they don't have the choice to put what they want up just as an, I was just gonna say this as an example on Manhattan Point here back in 18 we have a couple people that had very unique mailboxes and wish to keep them and we don't have a problem with that we haven't had a problem that if that's your choice okay but just realize that we are not liable for that that post Okay, but with these new road projects, we're taking that choice away from we, them. We have We're been, but we have, things. and that's the other thing is just want to mention, we do have given people the right to, if, if you've got a special post or a special mailbox, fine, okay, use it, but we're just going to step back and we're not going to be maintaining right. it. So. Okay, well, we don't have to get too yeah. carried away with that. But. If we're going to be paying the assessment, we might as well get the new mailbox that's paying for it. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. But you, I think you should also have the choice not to if you don't want it to. But that's... Okay. Should we open it up? And then we can come back if you got some more stuff. But let's raise a hand if you want to say something. Are you muted or go ahead? Come on. No, I'm not muted. I was waiting for you to call. All right. <laughs> um, we are at 11491 Whitefish Avenue. We are neighbors of Steve's Row, John Forney, Wygrens, John Rutger. Uh, we walk and drive this road all the time. Um, I am in agreement with them that at this point in time, I, we don't see cracks, we don't see potholes, we don't see any of those kinds of things. I understand you're trying to maintain rather than wait to get till it gets to the point that it's beyond um, topping and then have to completely repair. But my question is, is it something that has to be done this year? I mean, we're in the still in the throes of COVID. There's people that Yes, a lot of us are retired, but there are people on the point here that are working and are struggling. And is, is it something that could be put off two or three years? I think your timing of 2002 uh, being the time that this road was done, we bought our place in 2001 and it was a few years before that was blacktopped. Uh, it was gravel before that. I think Steve was correct about the timing of maybe four or five. I think you need to go back and look at that. Um, but I'm just questioning whether right now is the appropriate time if it's something that, if you've got other ones that absolutely have to be done right now, then that's fine. But if there's some that could wait four or five years and still have an overlay, or as Steve suggested, possibly ours is still in good enough condition to do the resealing, which would um, prolong the life of it. You know, that's a certainly consideration. I'm on board with the whole mailbox thing. You know, I built our mailbox and I really don't want it to be taken down. Um, that's just my personal opinion. Um, the other item that I struggle with, honestly, is we have multiple uh, places along this shoreline, and I know it's a struggle to try to figure out what's fair for everyone, but there are multiple places that have three, four, five million dollar homes on them and have three or four lots that they have built those homes on, and they get a $1,000 assessment. We have a little bitty hundred year old cabin that's a 50 foot lot that we should still pay the same amount is a struggle for me to understand how that is um, fair. It seems to me that the, the load should be shared more proportionally um, along the, the road. We've got an opening on the committee that we're gonna look into what the fair allocation should be. Would you like to get on it? <laughs> I would I would consider it. I mean, we're we're up here all the time. Um, have been for the last several years. Uh, as Cindy uh, said, she and she does. She walks that road every day. And, and beyond the and, committee. Yeah, we do in the summertime. And you know that road is in good condition. And I'm not saying push it out another 10 or 15 years so it has to be torn out. But I'm questioning if it needs to be done right this second. Thank you. I would, I would second the nomination for her to be on your committee. <laughs> She's really very bright. <laughs> so that's my two busy? cents. Mute <laughs> <laughs> yourself. <laughs> I'll shut up now and mute myself. Very well appreciated. Thank you. Huh. Anybody else out there? Mary or Lynn, do either of you have something to say? They're not there. I, I am here. Uh, and I've been a property owner since 1971 up there. And I, I have to say that I echo uh, Elaine's 
sentiment that I loved when that road <clears throat> went from, you know, gravel to uh, asphalt. And I think it's beautiful. I know I've met Cindy on the road and walked with her, but I also echo uh, Mr. Rose issue about the drainage thing because of the way that I'm situated, that thing drains right down into my driveway continually. I have an amazing amount of sand that I can use to do various things. But um, I just wonder, uh, I think two, the two things that I thought were important that, that Elaine said was the, you know, the square footage or the property amount would be maybe more equitably determined, A, and B, is it necessary right now? So thank you, I will mute myself. Thank you, thank you much. How about Lynn? How about Lynn, are you gonna come out, Lynn? Oh. I hi, hi, yes. Um, we are part of the Whispering Pines partnership there at 12305 Whitefish Avenue. Okay. And um, so we were, the a partnership um, is wondering how many lots would we be assessed? Oh. That's right. Yeah. If it's all on one parcel or property, then we were just looking at one, I believe. And I'd have to look into that. I think it was just by parcel that we were looking at. Lynn, are they all together in, uh, in one spot? There's there's twelve. Um, do you own them or do you rent them or how, what's the ownership? The cabins are owned. The property is all common ground. It's yeah. Down around this area. Is it this area? So we looked at each of those parcels as they're described as one. But the other people that go down a minimum unmaintained road to get to the road, they're individual. Well, no, we have you know, one road. Earlier, when we talked we had about one, this. We have one driveway leading out to Whitefish Avenue. One driveway going into our whole association there. So. Okay. Yeah, but Cindy, is that your name? Cindy? Yes. Your driveway is a minimum maintenance road that goes back and serves lots behind that are also. Well, that would be my boyfriend's my that, um, no, if you want to call it that. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. His lot is directly behind my lot. His lot is not on Whitefish. My lot is on Whitefish. Okay, but, but there so is referring a to the Whispering Pines with multiple owners. I, right, you know. well, and Whispering Pines is just down the road. And um, they have a fair amount of road frontage. Yeah. But um, the point is, is that back lot access to the road ownership. And right. You're going to get it, and, and you had missed that one. But if it's ten owners, so they should really get I it. I never right? did get an answer as to whether or not Daniel will be assessed. <laughs> Let me try to answer that. Based on what we've done with benefited but not abutting properties, in the past they've been assessed a half of an assessment. And so uh, if they're using this road as their access to get to the non-abutting property, that would be the recommendation, a half of an assessment. Okay, Char, do you have uh, Lynn's information down good enough where Dave can get back to her? Thank you. I think our uh, city engineer, Lynn, is going to have to get back to you after he looks at it better. Well, you're telling us that we have some work to do. And, and I, honestly, I talked to about six people that live on Whitefish today, just kind of going by and seeing them out in the road, and none of them 
want anything done with that road. So. True. I don't think except runoff. Well, but then that gets into a whole other can of worms. You know, that, that's kind of your individual property owner issues. Well, well, whoever, but I mean. Well, okay. Oh, a right away to the lake? I mean, that's where it goes down? Yeah, one of the, one of the, when they flat, flat into the whole thing, there's, there's two dozen of them, yeah. there's two dozen of them out on the peninsula. It goes right down. All right, if you want to, wait, you got to come up. If you're going to talk about it, you got to come up. John Forney. There are probably 20, maybe 24 of those easements. They range in width from 20 feet to 50 feet. And they're all over out there. They were part of what was, when they platted it, it yeah. was what was so deeded to the So is the water city. washing that easement out? Is that where you're The water from? is going all the way down to the lake. And it has eroded the bank. Yeah, well, that, I mean. Big time. They are things that we should look at that. Well, we already had permission to, my neighbor and I, who are on either side of that, we had permission to resurface that area, put in crushed granite, and we did some other things out by the road to try to slow the water down. But I've talked to other people who say, yeah, it just runs in torrents. When it rains hard, right. it runs right off the road and right into the lake. Thank you. Okay. Well, you're giving us a lot to talk about at another meeting. Does anybody else have anything? Come on, Joe. Just a quick question, Joe Rucker again. Is this a foregone conclusion, done deal? Has this been set in stone? Is there, I mean, ask I got Mr. the feeling Reese, from... Ask Mr. Reese that question. From, from reading the letter, it's like, this is, and maybe we can try to push back a little bit. What, what, where exactly does this stand? Thank you. Okay, sure. So where this stands is taking public comment at this hearing, which you're receiving tonight. Uh, we, we know that this is a five area project that we've programmed for this summer. Uh, you'll be looking at a resolution on Monday night that would include all five project areas. So if you, uh, as a council, wish to proceed, you can proceed on that basis with what's being planned. Um, the, the plans themselves haven't been prepared yet. It's, it's a feasibility study at this stage, and we're taking public comment. Uh, we've taken public comment on the other four project areas and gotten some good input, uh, things that would be taken into consideration during design that deal with drainage and some of the same concerns that we've heard tonight. So, um, you know, it, if the city council wants to have a discussion on it, they certainly can. That's, that's so your, to answer your, your question, prerogative. me being 20% of the voting capital here, it's not a done deal. My perception of it. It's got to be a council decision. Thank you. Yeah. But that decision is going to be made on Monday. It may be made on Monday. There's, well, it no, seems. To, get busy. There's some questions that got to be answered, and <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it'd be kind of a shame to jump into it and overlay that road and realize all these other issues that should have been corrected too. You know, so maybe we're jumping the gun with it. I, I don't know. I mean, that's what we have to have discussion about. Thank you. I could make a comment. There was a road that uh, we had proposed doing last year that uh, we ended up not doing because. Homeowners were not for it, and the bids came in too high, so it didn't happen. So it ain't over till it's over. <laughs> I guess my biggest concern is what John talked about: is the water going into the lake? Is that has a whole bunch of connotations to it? And I know we've talked about that before. I have a question for John: Did the remedy that you took did it alleviate the water running to the lake? So I can't really give you a feeling, uh, you know, if we get another 
you know, one or two inch rain, and we see that it just went right down the hill and washed out. I mean, th there were big boulders down there, and the sand, the water just took the sand right out from underneath them and moved them. So it's, yeah, I, I saw that. I went big. out and looked at it when, it when you were coming to the Public Works yes. uh, yes. Commission, and yes. I took a look at it, and it, it, it was bad. And I just wondered if that remedy... We think it, we started out at the road because that's where most of the water comes from. And we're working our way towards the lake, trying to stop it before it gets that far. But Did you do that out of pocket, John? Yes. You and your neighbor? Yeah. Good, Good steward you are. Okay, I don't know, we've kind of kicked this around probably enough for tonight. I, I just, but it's not over. Steve, I have one comment. I okay. agree with uh, the audience that we should be holding these um, uh, improvement hearings in the in the fall at budget time so that we can even plan in our budget exactly what we're going to do for road projects. So I, 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 I've always felt that way that we yeah. should be... Um, is my yeah, and the Manhattan Point and Anchor Point assessment, I mean, that I've thought that's, I've agonized over that for years, thinking, how did that get missed? You know, if we're going to start doing it, it should be a policy, and that just got missed. So. And we're, well, just, we're just following the law when we send out those notices. We're giving you a chance to come to the improvement hearing and um, have some idea of what we're proposing. So. That's all to give you a chance to um, persuade us either to do it or not to do it. So are we going to get a follow-up, uh, or do we have to come to the council meeting? Is that, if, we, if we want our voices to be heard? I think that we'll probably be talking about it at the council meeting on Monday, the 8th. So if you, you take public comment on Monday, the 8th, well, again? I don't know, Sharp, but okay. I mean, at least they would be there to hear what the conversation is. That you see the number of chairs here. Yeah. And this is it. This and is the other thing, on, on that meeting, you can zoom in and just watch it. So, you know, you don't have to come in, but you can see what's going on. I don't think we're going to try to pull any fast ones over on anybody, though. I, I'll assure you that. So. But there won't be any public comment because they had the chance tonight. Right. But, yeah. Thank you. I respect all your comments. I, I think most of us do. So. so that being said, should we call it a night? Closing? Make a motion? Well, we'll just close the, we don't have to adjourn, do we?